Hello, I'm Cheryl Barnes with Golden Threads, and I'm here today to introduce you to the world of machine quilting. I know you all have quilt tops, probably a stack of them, that need to be quilted. And one of the things that stumps quilters most is what should I do with my quilt top and how do I choose designs? Now, one of the reasons why quilters are stumped is because they don't have any collection of quilting designs to begin with. That would be like trying to make a quilt top without having a fabric stash. And we know that quilters um, do not lack for fabric stashes. So when will your quilt top is done, where do you go for your inspiration to begin to plan your quilting? Well, Golden Threads on our website and in our catalog offers pattern packets of designs. And I wanted to explain to you a little bit about what the panographs or the pattern packets were and how they can help you with the quilting of your quilt. I have a couple open here on the table. And this is Keep On Quilting Pattern Pack 2 by Karen Emerson. Now when you flip our packets open, when you see them at your local quilt shop or on our website, you will see a page like this on the back. And I want you to realize that the designs are not really that little. They are full-size designs, but we feel it's important that you see the complete design collection that comes in with each packet. So this is what your designs will look like in your pack. They are full-size designs. On the ones that are a little more complicated, we do give you the stitching diagrams so that you don't have to wonder where to start and where to go. They are all continuous lines, so there's a limited amount of stopping and starting when you start to free motion quilt. The great thing about having these loose, loose leaf pages is you can take these designs to a copy machine and size them up and size them down to fit your design, your, um, design needs. So let's say this is your um, quilt block here and you wanted to make it larger. Let's say this was five inches and you wanted to make it seven. You can use the proportional scale. Now the proportional scale, the original size is on the inside wheel. Your reproduction measurement is on the outside. So you would find your, your five and let's say that you wanted to make it seven. You would line your five up with your seven. I don't have my glasses, I'm sorry. I can't see what I'm doing. And it's five inches in the packet. But for your quilt block, you need it to be seven. We have a great proportional scale that will help you with that. So on the inside wheel, it says your original size in inches. The outside says your reproduction size in inches. So if your design in your packet was five inches, you'd find the five and you wanted it to be seven, you'd slide it to the seven so your two numbers aligned and then the window tells you that it's 140% larger. So when you went to your copy machine or your scanner and resized your pattern, you could get the exact size that you need for your quilt. Now, in order to use your paper patterns and to mark your quilt top, there's several quick different ways that you can do it. We use the Golden Threads quilting paper. You can see that it's translucent enough to um, trace your first copy. And why I have you trace it and not run it through your printer is because it does give you a little bit of cell memory for how you're going to be quilting it when you go through the tracing process. And then to see if that's really the design that you want to use on your quilt, we go through the auditioning process like we're showing here on the wall. This little Ohio star has several, several different ways um, that you can quilt it pinned up there. So try don't be afraid of trying different things and playing with your patterns that come in the pattern packets. So these are, this will excite you once you find a quilting plan that you like in order to start um, free motion quilting. Now, once you find your designs and you need to mark your quilt top with them, you, there's several different ways you can do that. Again, we use the quilting paper so you can trace the design that you like. Um, stack several layers of paper underneath. Needle punch this on your sewing machine with a large needle and no thread. And what that does is it gives you multiple copies of the same design. Now you have two choices with this. You can well, you place the bumpy side up and on your fabric, you can use the quilt pounce. And the quilt pounce that I recommend and sell is the one that is ironed off. So you can see that even through the tiny holes from your sewing machine, you're going to be able to mark your pattern. And show you how this wonderful pounce disappears with just a little bit of heat. There you go.
the paper. You can adhere it to your fabric with pins or you can adhere it to your fabric using the sticky dot stamper. Now why I recommend the sticky dot stamper is you can see here that the pins have created little hills and valleys in the paper. So your paper does not lie completely flat. Here, the little green dots, sticky dots do not make the green dots. I just did that with a marker so you can see where I've placed them. And what I've done, and what you can do is use your sticky dot stamper. Oh, we still do the paper over here. And press down like this. It releases the sticky dot, and then that's what's going to hold it nice and flat. Now this is made to be permanent on paper, so it will not um, stay on your fabric or leave any kind of residue, but it does give you a nice, um, nice um, stable um, way of holding your paper on. Now, once you quilt through your paper, you're going to need to remove it. My tip, tip for that is to simply pull your project a little bit and the paper will pop right away from your stitches. If you do have a design where you cross over your stitches several times or your stitches get really small and you get these little baby slivers in here, most of the time they will come out by just brushing them with your fingernail. Um, you can use a toothbrush to do that with and then follow up with the sticky lint roller and that will remove all of the little slivers that you will that you'll have on your on your quilt top borders with lots of different border designs some that are all blocks feathers holiday designs nature designs our designers range from very contemporary to very um, to feathers uh, we have Judy Allen who specializes in feathers, Sue Patton who does freehand work. This is one of our pattern packets for creating your own pantographs. So if you do quilt on a frame, you can use any of the other designs with your laser or these t other techniques that I have shown you, or you can create your own pantograph and work from the back of your machine. The way that I teach free motion quilting is using the dot to dot te technique because it's a technique that mimics how we learn to write and it also gives you skills that you can build on. And when we get to the sewing machine, I'm going to show you how you can, easy ways to practice. But first let me describe the technique to you. In the dot to dot book, I give eight different practice shapes. These are basically um, your letters. And you don't have to learn all of them at once. You don't have to practice all of them at once. I usually start my students out with straight lines and then um, the curls or the, the, the curls and then the um, petal points down here. And um, these are small in the book, but when you practice, I'm going to show you how to blow them up and then um, to be larger and then practice on your sewing machine. So one or two of these you can start practicing and you'll be able to do better and feel more confident with your free motion quilting. So let me show you up on the wall here what I'm talking about with the technique. These are two of the shapes, the scallops and the petal points. Now when I am telling my students how to do uh, practice their free motion quilting, I'm not so concerned that you stay on the line. I know a lot of quilters say, oh, I can't quilt because I can't follow a design, I can't stay on a line. And it's more important that you make nice, smooth shapes in between the dots than it is that you stay exactly on the line. Because eventually, your markings are going to be off of your quilt, and you're not going to see if, if, if one little scallop is higher than the other little scallop. So just get used to practicing the shapes. Now the same thing down here with the petal points. Just make a nice shape in between each dot. Now why I put red dots on the shapes are for several reasons. One is it gives you a starting and an ending place um, for your stitching. It's a target for your needle. It's a place for your eye to look because a lot of quilters wonder how far ahead they should look when they're quilting. And it also breaks your design up into little manageable chunks. So you're just doing one section at a time. It also gives you a place to stop, reposition your hands, breathe, pet your cat, drink your wine, whatever you do in your free motion quilting. But it does make it break it down into little sections for you. Now even just looking at, for a couple minutes at these scallops and these petal points, after you have practiced these shapes, these shapes will then take you on to the next level of quilting, and that's when you're actually quilting patterns. 
you can see that this pattern here is made up of the scallop and the petal point. Now the stitching diagram for this is you do your petal point, your petal point, the big one, and you move on. Or you can do your little one, the big one, the little one, and move on. Either way, it's a continuous line design, and you're using the same design, um, the same shapes that you have practiced to begin with. Now, eventually, when you get confident with this level of quilting and this level of quilting, you can also, and you will, move on to this level. Now I want to back up a little bit and a lot of quilters think that if they can't quilt designs at this level or they're at a quilt show and they see all these wonderfully quilt, quilted quilts, instead of being inspired, they get overwhelmed. Not everybody starts out quilting like that. This is where you need to start and these are the builders <clears throat> so that you can build your free motion um, confidence. And you can see down in this design here, this is just a mirror of this one. And even though it's a lot um, more complicated and intricate design, it still breaks down to the two same basic shapes. Now let's go over to the sewing machine and see how you can actually do some of these practices. All right, this is Cheryl Barnes again, and I'm joined by Hattie Brown at the Handy Quilter Studio, and she is showing how to practice and learn um, free motion quilting dot to dot. If you remember, these were the scallop shapes, and one of the practice exercises is to trace them in different sizes and then different orientations on the quilting paper, and without thread in your needle, just needle punch from dot to dot not necessarily trying to stay on the dot, but just to make a nice smooth mo motion between your dots so that you can you learn the shapes like you learn your letters. So you try them in several different sizes, try them in several different orientations. She did some scallops um, with the bump on the top. Now she's practicing her scallops with the bump on the bottom. And this will is the first way to practice your just on one of your, your shapes. Great job, Hattie. You can see that even with uh, um, these little scallop shapes, you'll be able to do clamshells on your quilts. You'll be able to do lots of, lots of different things in your borders and your corners and um, start quilting some actual quilts with just this one shape. Okay, the second part of practicing is once you needle punch through the paper, then go ahead and put your paper onto a fabric sandwich. And it can be any old fabric because what you're trying to do is get used to moving your fabric now in the shape of the scallops. Now if you don't want to stitch through the paper a second time, you can also use your pounce box and, and mark through the holes these scallop um, practice shapes or whichever one of the other practice shapes that you're working on. And I noticed that Hattie was wearing the Machinger gloves and that a lot of very, quilters find very, very helpful because it just gives you a little bit of grip so that it's easier to move your fabric and you don't feel like you have to pinch your fabric or, um, or crumple it up in order to move it. So you can even see now that her speed is picking up. She's getting more familiar and more um, comfortable with the, with the scallop shapes. And you'll also notice that we're not using any thread. Well, the reason why we don't use thread when we're practicing is quilters get a little weird when you add thread. Because then they're worried about their stitch length and they're worried about staying on the line. And when you're learning to quilt dot to dot, it's not about any of those things. It's just learning to make your basic shapes. So eventually, if you read through this, the practice steps in the book, I will have you add thread to your machine. But the demonstration that you're watching today is just learning how to practice. So I encourage you to um, get the Golden Threads um, free motion quilting dot to dot book, practice your shapes, move on to designs, and finish that stack of quilt tops you have in your closet.